Malik is dead. All hail the return of Darth Revan, the true Lord of the Sith. All hail Lord Revan. All hail Lord Revan. All hail Lord Revan. A. D. N. It's headphones steel! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic review, and in this case I wanted to replay the game one more time on the rumors that the game might be, be might be being remade with updated graphics, a different playstyle, and things like that. So I wanted to play the vanilla original version of the game, but definitely settle in my mind that I am able to get Revan's robes and create as close to a look in the game as what we see in the promotional art. Um, so that is what I did. I played the game without any mods or upgrades or updates or anything like that. It was just the version of the game that's released for Android in the Google Play Store via Asper. So um, I started the game and I wasn't actually going for any sort of um, canon, canon um, storyline or playthrough or anything like that. I just wanted to get Revan's dark side robes. So I created a female soldier this time around because uh, that's a character I don't think I've ever played maybe once way back in the day when the when I first played the game in 2003 to 2004 but um, I decided to switch it up played as a female Sith character so I was gonna go full dark side to get the dark side robes um, and essentially I wanted to just play the game so I could get his robes um, and that presented me with a couple of additional benefits so in the playthrough of the game, I want the first thing I wanted, or the first main point I wanted to go for was to make sure I had enough computer spikes by the end of the game that I would be able to purchase them because it does have a pretty high um, computer spike count. So it, was, it looked like it was anywhere from 21 to 25 spikes depending on your computer usage. So the one thing I made sure I did was to ensure that my computer spike level was greater than zero but at a level that um was enough to the point where the cost wouldn't be um crazy uh, and also throughout the play of, of the game i wanted to make sure that if i came across computer spikes that i was not only getting experience points by fixing droids but it having enough on hand where I would not run short by the end of the game because I think in previous playthroughs, except for the one of the recent times where I got his light side robes, I would always be short by a few spikes or I wouldn't have any left by the end of the game. So I was always making sure that I had a um, greater than zero amount of spikes. One of the things that was at, and so to that end, one of the other things I would did was to make sure I visited as many vendors as I could and check if they had any spikes for sale. And the one thing that I found was that on Tatooine, the Rodian in the Zerka office always seemed to have spikes. So at the end of the game, the one thing that I made sure I did was before going to the Star Forge was to head to the Yavin station, sell off as much product as I could, and then head to Tatooine and buy as many computer spikes as I could so that I think I ended up with over a hundred. So in the event that I needed to repair droids, I could do that, but also have enough spikes to um, forge some of Revan's robes. So that was one thing. And then in the research of the game, because I was also looking at forums and things for little bits of tidbits in the game and things I might have missed. So this time around, um, I thought I would also make sure I used the Sith mask that was available available on Korriban. So you can either um, get the mask from Uthar Wynn's um, uh, room or apartment or whatever on in the Sith Academy or in one of the tombs in the Valley of the Sith Lords. Um, I think in the one, I actually I didn't check or I don't remember offhand which one it was, but I ended up stealing the mask from Uthar Wind's room. And this is the closest mask in game that looks like the 
um, mask that Revan wears, the shading is a little off, and you could kind of attribute that to the uh, promotional art having the reflection and hue of the lightsabers that Revan holds. So, in general, the Sith mask is the closest mask that um, you can find in game that um, looks like Revan's mask. Um, otherwise, the rest of the items are kind of optional items, but kind of, but notably items to give your character as high of a um, character ca or abilities that um, you might um, or basically just a way to upgrade your character's abilities to have as strong of uh, um, power as available. So I also um, set up my, my character to ha use Marka Ragnos' gauntlets because it's restricted to the dark side and it has a bonus feat and uh, two bonus feats uh, weapons focus lightsaber and weapon specialization lightsaber so the character uses their lightsaber as best as possible. As far as the stats on Revan's robes you get a defense bonus of 5, max dexterity bonus of plus 8, and is restricted to the dark side so you do get dark robes versus the lighter robes on the light side. The dark side robes also though have um, a strength modifier of plus four and regeneration of one. Um, I, I think that was health and force points, but I didn't actually check while I was playing in the game once I equipped it. Um, the Sith Mask has a mind affecting immunity and also a bonus feature, feat of uh, weapons focused lightsaber and the ability to regenerate your force points at one. So, um, one of those bonuses, or two bonuses that give your character good weapon, lightsaber usage and the ability to regenerate your, regenerate your force points faster towards the end of the game. Um, the other thing that I found in researching tidbits and upgrading characters in um, the game, and this is related to lightsaber crystals, is that I forget if I was looking at Pazak or a uh, random side quest, but I learned this time around, and I'm surprised it's something that I didn't know previously, was that um, if you play Pazak with the Rodian on Yavin Station and beat him 10 times, then he gives you a big discount on his goods. So instead of um, items costing, you know, 22,000 credits, they get bumped down to like 8,000 credits. So, and that, those are estimates, but basically he gives you a massive discount on all his goods. And I didn't know that, so one of the reasons why I usually didn't go to the Yalta Station was because it didn't feel like his goods were worth the cost of it. But aside from um, that, if you visit the Yavin Station um, for after the first star map, so after Dantooine, then after your second star map, regardless of the planet, and then finally after getting all four star maps, but prior to going to the Unknown World, then... Um, uh, after the second time, you'll meet some Trandoshans that you're able to scare off, but after the fourth star map, they show up again and try to attack you. So as a thank you from the Rodian for saving him from the Trandoshans, he'll give you uh, access to his specialized private workbench of things he's working on that he doesn't show to um, anybody. So in that list of special goods are two lightsaber crystals called Heart of the Guardian and Mantle of the Force. So the Heart of the Guardian Crystal is a bronze orange lightsaber crystal that enhances the statistics of your other um, lightsaber um, modifiers. Um, same thing with the other one called Mantle of the Force which has a cyan color. So when you equip those two crystals in your lightsabers then you're able to enhance your modifiers. So if you want a more reddish orange lightsaber, you can do that. Or if you want a more blue uh, lightsaber, then you can do that. Um, so if you're using a single lightsaber on either um, affiliation of dark side or light side, then you have to pick one. Whether If you're using a single lightsaber or a double bladed lightsaber, if you're using um, two lightsabers as to two handed weapon fighting, then you can use both for yourself, which is what I did in this case. So this is the, the one of those things where I got as close to Revan as I could because in the screenshots he does use red and um, purple lightsabers and using them in game, which is what I did for most of the game until I got the crystals. 
um, was the so if you use you can modify your lightsabers with red and purple to have them uh, really strong lightsabers with the various cr other crystals that you add. But by using Heart of the Guardian and Mantle of the Force, you can get even more powerful lightsabers. So by the end of the game, um, I was able to get uh really strong lightsabers stronger than what i think i've ever gotten before so for the, my reddish lightsaber that i use heart of the guardian so my damage energy was 9 to 23 with a critical threat of 19 to 20 by 2 and um, addition of 2 to 12 with an attack modifier of plus 12 or sorry with an attack modifier of plus 5 on my and that was my right lightsaber on my left-handed lightsaber with the mantle of the force uh, crystal so that one's going to be the blue one which i substituted in for the purple lightsaber um, my damage energy was 7 to 21 with a critical threat of 90 to 20 times 2 with an attack modifier of plus 4 and regeneration force points of 2 so um overall I want to say that that's probably the most powerful lightsaber combo I've ever been able to create um, with the various crystals in the game. Um, so when you're playing it, you can mess around with the various crystals depending on what planet you're on. So if you want to have more ion protection to use versus droids, you can do that. If you want to have um, various other stat modifiers, then you can play around with it. But the overall damage energy goes down. In playing around, this was the most powerful combination I could find. Um, I want to say there might be more. There might be a more powerful combination, but with the various crystals that I got, this was the most I could do. Um, so in the gameplay videos, when you after um, the final play visit of the, at Yavin Station, when I buy the crystal, um, I played around with some of the combinations, and this was the best I could do. So if you so in general, this is a, the final setup that I wanted to have to get as close to Darth Revan's promo look that I could get. So Revan's robes and the Sith mask get us really close as far as a look, less the hood that's over his head, which I mean, when you're in a fight sequence with your enemies, the hood's going to fall off anyways. So whether you're female or male, a ma female or male character, that's going to get you the best look by the end of the game. Um, I'm sure in the when you're playing through the game and if you upgrade your um, gear abilities, so whatever that top left icon is for um, bonus uh, modifiers, I think there was an add-on for being able to regenerate health points or something like that that automatically increases, but because I was focused on the computer spikes, I didn't get up to... Um, that or I didn't get up to gearhead level three and um, implant level three, I believe it is for the implants, which is that top left icon to be able to get something like that. But because I have regeneration and then I upgraded my the various force powers to uh, offset that, I was okay. So in this playthrough, I maxed out at force lightning. I don't think I did force storm, but. I actually wasn't paying attention, but I did get Death Field for the max drain life tree of force powers, and then I got the max, um, I got up to insanity um, force powers as far as the fear and horror force power. So that was one thing that I wanted to try out to see how that worked in the game, and it actually helps with uh, stopping your enemies from firing at you and in general attacking you so you can take them out that much faster. So that's all there is for this review. Overall I want to say I'm impressed with the result I got. So in the um, episode guide for the um, post you'll see the, the various stats and attack modifiers and all of that. Or not attack modifiers but my final lightsaber setup. Um, the various stats for all the various upgrades I got and then the look of Revan in the game. So it obviously it looks orange and blue for the lightsabers, but those are the closest hues as far as red and purple if you want to get the most powerful lightsabers. But in the gameplay videos, which I'll have a link to the playlist as well in the show notes, you'll see that throughout the game I did use um, Revan, or sorry, red and blue, purple as much as possible with various other mono, the various other upgrade crystals to get the 
most powerful lightsabers I could use until I got the um, Heart of the Man Guardian and Mantle of the Forest Crystals. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is, Patel, is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in. And if you want to help support the show, get bonus content and all that, you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.